In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christ is born. Let us glorify him. Today I want to congratulate you on the blessed feast of the Nativity. This was a very blessed Advent fast, and I feel like the church was full of repentance, full of services, full of retreats, full of the Word of God, and full of revival. And so I'm very thankful for this, uh, thankful to God for this blessed uh, Advent fast, and thankful for all of you, and very joyful for this blessed feast. Because in this feast, in this feast, we celebrate the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, the only begotten Son, the Logos, who is also God, who is unlimited, who is uncontainable, was contained in the womb of the Virgin. St. Augustine, he said something very beautiful. He said, Within the virgin's womb, spiritual nuptials were celebrated. As God united with the flesh, the flesh clung to God, emerging like a bridegroom from his chamber. At this wedding, all creation was stirred, seeming to exult. The, in, the angelic choir proclaims as a result of these nuptials, this wedding that happened between the flesh and the divinity, Peace to men of goodwill, for the Son of God, the Son of God, became the Son of Man. Today, or tonight, I want to meditate with you on this marriage that St. Augustine speaks of, this marriage, this hypostatic union, which is the term the, the fancy theologians use, which is the unity of the divinity and the and the flesh. And this is very important for us for three reasons that I want to speak of today. Because of the incarnation, because of this incarnation, because Christ took flesh, all of us, we are called to live to a higher calling. We're called to live to a higher calling. St. Augustine told us that the Son of God became the Son of Man. St. Athanasius in his famous work on the Incarnation said, For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. And before you accuse St. Athanasius of heresy, or myself of heresy, we have to say that God's divine essence is absolutely unique to the Trinity. So we don't, we're, we're not polytheists, yes? There's only one divine essence and that belongs to, to God. That's enough for the qualifying statement. But St. Augustine and St. Athanasius, if I wanted to put their thoughts into one sentence that summarized Christmas, I would say, the Son of God became the Son of Man so that we could become sons of God. That is what Christmas is all about. The Logos took a body. He took a body. He sacrificed his body on the cross, so that I could eat his body. So when I eat his body, when I eat his body, my body and his body are joined together. And when I drink his blood, his blood becomes my blood, my blood type is not just AB. My blood reflects the family that I am from. That I am son, as we said in the hymns today, that I am a son of the second Adam. Not just from the first Adam. In the secret prayers that the priest prays after the fraction, I'll tell you what the secret prayer says. The priest says, since you have purified us all, since you have purified us all, you join us to yourself. You join us to yourself through the partaking of your divine mysteries that we may become filled with the Holy Spirit. This joining is so amazing that Christ wants to be joined with us, that we can become one body together. You know, this is so important because the, our identity determines our lifestyle. A rich person lives a rich 
lifestyle. A poor person, if he wants to live a rich lifestyle, he'll be in a herd of pain because it's not sustainable. Because who they want to be is not supported by who they actually are. Who they want to be is not supported by who they actually are. Who are you? You are joined to Christ. Today we want to understand who we are. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that we could become sons of God. We are the sons of God. We know our calling. And tonight we want to live up to our calling. The three qualities that I could think of, and there's many, there's three qualities that I want to speak of. Because now we are joined to Christ, we should have three qualities. At least three qualities. There's many more, but at least these three. The first one is peace. Peace. When we were in Jerusalem last February, I had a very interesting conversation with, uh, with a rabbi at the Wailing Wall. I've spoken to you about this conversation in different parts. But when this rabbi saw me at the Wailing Wall, he recognized me as a Coptic priest. And so he asked me a few questions about Egypt. And um, I was curious about what everybody was doing at the Wailing Wall. And so I asked him a few questions of my own. And once I found him very friendly, a nice guy, um, I started to ask him more intense questions. And there was a group of us. And we asked him, when is the Messiah coming? <laughs> we asked the rabbi, when is the Messiah coming? And he said many things to answer that question. And, uh, and they were all very nice. We could talk about that later. But the, one, the first, one of the first things he said is he pointed to Al-Aqsa Mosque. And he said, when the Messiah comes, we will have peace. And as he was pointing, he said, clearly, we don't have peace. So the Messiah hasn't come. But the irony is that on the day Christ was born, on the day, the very first thing, the, the hosts of angels, they appeared to the shepherds and they were chanting and saying, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill towards man. Christ came to bring peace on earth. Christ did bring peace on earth. The only problem is, is that in order for there to be peace, both parties have to agree to, to peace. If two countries are at war together, and you can see this now, and one wants peace and the other does not, will there be peace? No, there will be no peace. Christ came with an olive branch extending peace to all mankind. He came to bring all people to himself. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Other religious leaders, we won't mention names, but they came as military conquerors. Their religion spread through intimidation, through war. Christianity spread through peace and spread through, through love. Our Lord came in peace. And peace is relevant to our subject tonight because actually the word peace, the word peace, actually means to join. Did you know that? The word peace actually means to join, to make together, to tie together into a whole, into a whole. It is only when I am joined to Christ it is only when I am joined to Christ that I will feel whole. I will feel peace. I will feel complete. Otherwise, there will be a peace missing in me and there will be no peace. There will be no peace. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, you know, Father, I'm not that religious. And I was very sad by this expression because to be without Christ is to be incomplete, is lacking wholeness, lacking wholeness. You know, we just got back from the convent and many of our youth, 
we sat with many of the mothers, the nuns, and many of our youth, they always asked the same questions to every nun. Basiani is very nice. And uh, the, they asked like the nuns, um, why did you join the convent? That was like always question like number one. And many of them responded saying, and they all kind of responded in a similar way, but all of them responded in a, in a very nice way. They said, once they came to the convent, or they came to the monastery, they felt peace. They felt peace. They felt peace. And what kind of peace, I was thinking to myself, what kind of peace did they feel that caused them to leave their mode of life and to abandon, you know, their jobs, their professions, their studies, even their families to come and live in a convent? It's because they felt true peace. They felt true peace. And then our youth asked a follow-up question. They asked them, Did you, do you miss anything? from your previous life? Do you miss anything from the world? And all of them very quickly said, no, I don't know, what are you talking about? What? Miss, what do you mean miss anything? What? Why would they miss anything from the world when they have peace? They have peace. They feel complete. They feel whole. By giving themselves to God, they feel whole. This is peace. This is not the peace that the world gives. You know what our Lord Jesus Christ said? The peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give unto you. The Lord gives us a special peace so that we can have peace and feel complete in the world. We want to have this peace in a world full of anxiety and calamity and tribulation. The Bible teaches us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We want this peace. The incarnation brings us this peace. The second quality that we have by being joined to Christ is that we have joy. Joy is part of Christmas. You know, it's part of the famous Christmas song, Joy to the World, the Lord is God. Yeah, let earth receive her. It's part of the Christmas. I, that Christmas brain has joy. Joy. When the angels appeared to the shepherds again, the angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. And it said, after the angel had spoken to them, a multitude of angels came, and they were praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. And then after the, the shepherds had met the Lord Jesus Christ, it says that they returned. How did the shepherds return? Imagine you had just seen now little baby Jesus. How did the shepherds return? It said they returned glorifying and praising God for the things that they had seen and heard as it was told to them. Our Lord, he brought joy into this world. You know, during the fast of St. Mary's, a, fam a famous miracle, I'm sure you all saw the miracle that happened um, in one of the churches in Egypt. A paralyzed man who had been paralyzed for a long period of time. He was in the church praying. And then he saw St. Mary. And then this paralyzed man got up and, and walked. And as I was watching the videos of this, like, of what was going on in the church, I was so happy to see the church's joy. The church was full of full of joy, and they were singing with all of their heart. They were praising God. Everyone was clapping. Everyone was so cheerful. Everyone was so happy. Why were they so happy? Because they had seen God do a mighty miracle in their church. And so they had amazing, amazing, amazing joy.
And I feel that that type of joy shouldn't just be because a paralyzed man is here. That's the joy. Like, I wish, Yanni, go see that video. I wish Intotibu could into, be happy, joyful. Like, praying with all your heart. Because we are joined to Christ. And because we are joined to Christ, we should be so, so joyful. That's why St. Paul, in his epistle to the Philippians, while is, he is in jail, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say to you, rejoice. We should have this joy because we are joined to Christ. Our Lord said this in the gospel. He says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. How is my joy going to remain in you? Because I am in you or you are in me that your joy may be full. Your joy may be full. Joy is in my life because Jesus is in my, in my life. And that's why whenever Christ met someone, he brought joy to them. So many times when the Lord, uh, he would heal the paralytic, he said, son, be of good cheer to the, the woman who had a 12, who suffered for 12 years with sickness. And she went to see everybody, and no one could heal her. The Lord looked at her and said, Daughter, be of good, be of good cheer. When Jesus saw his disciples frightened on the Sea of Galilee, and they were about to pass away because of the big storm, he said, Be of good cheer. The Lord was always coming to make us. He wants us to see us in good cheer. He wants to see us in good cheer. I get very sad or I, I lose my cheer if I see you not happy, not cheerful, not joyful. The life of the Christian should always be cheerful. The life of the Christian should always be joyful. The third quality that I want to speak to you about is it has to be love love. Because Christmas is all about love. In the epistle of St. John this morning, it was said so nicely. It said, he who does not love does not know God. If you do not know how to love, you do not know God. For God is love. And this is the love. Watch this. And this is the love of God. This is the love, in this love, in this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. How do we live through him? Because we are joined together. This is love. This is love. And, and, it, and in this love, not that we loved God. I'm continuing on in the reading. In this, in this love, oh man, I can't read. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation, that's a word I'm probably mispronouncing. Everybody mispronounces. Propitiation means taking away sin. Jesus Christ, he was making peace with us. And the only reason he made peace with us, why did he make peace with us? Because he loved us. It's not because we were good or because we repented or because we loved God. Actually, we were so unfaithful to God. Actually, we abandoned God. Actually, we left God. But even though we left God, God pursued us. And took away our sins. As we're thinking about Christmas, I was always wondering, where are the priests on the day of Christmas? Where are the Pharisees? Where are the kings? The only people that came to see the Lord Jesus Christ is a few lowly shepherds and some magi from a far away place. Where are all the Hebrews? This is their Messiah after all. But the Bible says he came to his own and they, 
they did not receive him. They were busy with other things. They had other priorities. They didn't have love for God. But even though they didn't have love for God, God came for them. That's why I want to share with you that love is not a feeling. Love is not an emotion. Love is a person. Love is a person. So when I am joined to Christ... All I know how to do is to love. All I know how to do is to love. And I can love in any circumstance. I can love those who persecute me. I can love those who challenge me. I can love those who make life difficult for me. Because love is not an emotion. Love is a person. And I am joined to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the end of that saying says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love. We also ought to love one another. One another. And this is what I hope this Christmas is that you will love one another, that you will be reconciled with those who have faults with you, that you will find peace with those. That is part of love. That is part of love. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Sons of God are the ones who are joined to Christ. The sons of God are the ones who are willing to sacrifice and to serve for others. To bring everyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. When we were at the convent, I gave the girls a challenge that I want to give to you. I said, your job is to bring one person to Christ. At least one. If you can bring more, that would be great. But your job is to bring one. If you can bring one, that would be great. This is the true sign of love. To serve others. To love others. To give yourself as a living sacrifice. He sacrificed his body, so we should sacrifice our body for the sake of love. I wish you all a blessed Christmas and blessed feast of the Nativity, full of peace, joy, and love. And glory be to God forever. Amen.